Diane, I'm here at the Victorian front where the U.S. has cut off electricity, water, and gas to the tiny four-bedroom republic. The situation is very tense and extremely dangerous. It's only a matter of time before, uh... Oh, my God, they've opened fire. All right, looks like things are getting very heated here. This is not a safe place to be. And now sports. Because of an accident today at the Quahog Cable Company, all television transmission will be out for an undetermined amount of time. Of course, no one can see this news program, so it doesn't really matter what we say. <laughs> I'm the Lord Jesus Christ. I think I'll go get drunk and beat up some midgets. How about you, Diane? Well, Tom, I just plain don't like black people. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, we're still on in Boston? It was a moving scene today at Hatch Pond as six members of the Pawtucket Fire Department struggled valiantly to save the life of a fish trapped under the frozen ice. Rescue workers managed to get the fish out of the water, but unfortunately, it died shortly after. What's that, Daddy? Well, that's Mercury, Jake, the planet closest to the sun. What is doing down here by the wharf? I haven't the foggiest, but we should probably ask a scientist. I'm a guy, you jackass! Well, actually, that was pretty much it. Oh, but there'll be other stuff, too. Look, I'm turning down the thermostat. See Diane's erect nipples at 11. Ha! <laughs> Get used to this sight, Diane. Guy's running away from you. Tom, you're so deep in the closet, you're finding Christmas presents. Those Chinese sure do like to spit, don't they? Well, Diane, that last report was so good, I think you deserve a spanking. Oh, Tom, I don't think your wife would appreciate that. Diane, that frigid old cow lives in Quahog. She can't hear a word I'm saying. Actually, we're back on the air in Quahog. The dog napper has been traced to the sleazy motel. Ah, I see my colleague Tom Tucker is already on the scene. Who's that, baby? Hello, this is Tom Tucker. Z evil twin Todd Tucker, out to destroy his brother's reputation. Ha ha ha! Now I'm going back inside to have freaky sex with my prostitute, with whom I still have 45 minutes. Now back to this breaking news. Meanwhile, here at home, Quahog remains in the sweltering grip of a freak heat wave. Uh, I don't think you should use the word freak, Diane. Some people might find it offensive. Finish your oatmeal, son. Why bother? I'm just a freak! A freak! We're all a little different, Diane, each one of us. Good point, Tom. We're certainly feeling the effects of this heat wave even here in our studio. <laughs> Freak. So stay inside and stay cool. Come on, Mom. You can't stay in bed all day. You gotta call Dad and get back together with... Ah! Holy crap! We'll have more on these new developments after this. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's a lower-middle-class Irish family. That's right, Tom. This is just one of many public disturbances caused by the Griffin family of Quahog, who seem to have acquired superpowers. Very strange story, Diane. Coming up next, can bees think? A new study confirms that no, they cannot. And since the laws of death no longer apply, I can do this. That's right, Tom. <laughs> and now it's time for sports. Tom is a wonderful man. I don't see the problem either, but let's go to Ollie Williams for the in-depth analysis. Ollie? Ladies old! Thanks, Ollie. Over to you, Peter. In other news, I won't be going to the play because I'm sure it will be lousy. Tom, I'm getting late word that you're a petty, jealous closet case. Bit of breaking news. We now go live to Diane being a bitch. Diane? Welcome to the Quahog Special People's Games. I'm Tom Tucker. And I'm Diane Simmons. It's a great day to be alive, Tom, able-bodied or not. It sure is, Diane. Today we'll see some of Quahog's finest athletes struggle valiantly against God's twisted designs. You'll cheer, you'll cry, you might even get a cheap laugh or two. I know I will, Tom. In fact, there's the distinct possibility that by the end of the day, we'll all be going to hell. I'll see you there, Diane. Our top story today, cowardly kids lay down rubber at the old Selberg place. Wait, 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 turn that up. Peter Griffin and Glenn Quagmire were seen bolting... were seen bolting out of the supposedly haunted house after just one half hour, leaving only their pride and twin trails of urine behind them. Let's go live to Ollie Williams with the Black U Weather Report. Ollie? It's raining sideways! Sounds rough, Ollie. Do you have an umbrella? Had one! Where is it? Inside out, two miles away! Is there anything we can do for you? Bring me some soup! What kind? Chunky! All right, we'll get on that. We interrupt this program to bring you a special bulletin on the approach of Hurricane Norman. Here with an update is Greg the Weather Mime. Okay, it's gonna be cold. Very cold. And, and, and there's gonna be wind. And people's parents will throw fecal matter down on them from the rooftops. How awful! Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. That's, that's rain. Y yes. It'll rain. 
The Quahog mayoral race is heating up with incumbent Adam West squaring off against challenger Lois Griffin. Which leads many political analysts to ask the question, can a woman really be mayor or will she just menstruate all over the city? Stay with us. I made it up. I figured if people thought the last scroll was found, everyone would stop looking, giving me the edge to find it myself. But what I did was wrong. And as an act of contrition, I will now insert this carnivorous earwig into my brain. Huh, kind of tickles. Ah! Oh, God! It's eating out the back of my eyes! Can my wife Stacy get you anything? Go to hell, Tom. Already there, hon. Some new developments in the Flight 209 drama. Recently discharged pilot Captain Glenn Quagmire is apparently talking the plane down. Ollie Williams has the story. Ollie? I'm at the wrong airport! Oops, well, thanks, Ollie. Uh-oh! There he goes. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. A bit of breaking news. A local family is forced out of their home by ghosts. Who are they going to call? <sighs> Ghostbusters, Tom? No, Diane, they're insurance company. That's just stupid what you said. And here comes the heroic blind man. Tell us, sir, how did you summon the courage to save your friend from that burning building? That freaking place was on fire? And there you have it. Coming up next, watch me shave. Coming up in this half hour, our undercover expose on conveniently placed news reports in television shows. But first, Peter, look out for that skateboard. Yeah! Also, scientists announced today that if your hand is bigger than your face, you have cancer. Ha-ha! <laughs> got you! Oh, ah! Ah, oh, that's not even really news. In a moment, we will use the special lights to see just how filthy this seemingly clean hotel room really is. In other pseudo-scientific news, a local man claims to have spotted Bigfoot. We've got the exclusive interview. I was about to bone my girlfriend out at the lake but suddenly she yelled, so I looked up and it was Bigfoot. So what happened next? Then I went back to bone her, but the mosquitoes were going crazy and she said there was no way. 